procedure, the group being led by Commander Bo Bobko, uh, Pilot Graby, uh, Mission Specialist Hilmers and Stewart, and William Pales, the uh, DOD payload specialist. They get into a modified uh, recreational vehicle for the trip out to the pad. Uh, astronaut John Young, the head of the astronaut office, uh, uh, accompanying them. Uh, out uh, before they get to the pad, uh, uh, John Young uh, leaving the group and flying the uh, shuttle training aircraft to check with weather for approaches to the, uh, the shuttle runway if it should be necessary for the Atlantis to return to the launch site because of a problem during the launch. Uh, in this particular mission, uh, the press not present at the departure of the crew However, a number of well-wishers uh, in the KSC workforce uh, waving them on uh, to the pad. The video recorded earlier, uh, the crew now on board the orbiter Atlantis and going through their preparations, uh, which include uh, the ingress uh, procedures, uh, the setting the uh, various switches to the proper configuration, checking out their uh, uh, various circuits uh, with the Mission Control Center in Houston. And we go now to the Mission Control Center for a report on preparations there. This is Mission Control Houston. Flight controllers are on station here in the Mission Control Center, watching the progress of the count and monitoring the condition of the vehicle. All systems on Atlantis appear to be go at this time. This is Mission Control. This is shuttle launch control at T minus 8 minutes, 56 seconds, and counting. The launch events are now being controlled by the ground launch sequencer from now up to the T minus 25 second mark when they switch to the onboard redundant set launch sequencer. The ground launch sequencer is part of the launch processing system and operates by relaying commands to the orbiter's onboard computers which then report back to the launch processing system that the commands have been executed successfully. The countdown at T minus 8 minutes, 20 seconds, and counting. The primary job of the onboard computers is to check that all of the launch commit criteria, such as propellant loads, temperatures, pressures, and other measurements, are normal. Just past the eight minute point in the countdown, everything proceeding smoothly towards a liftoff. The liftoff, uh, planned liftoff time, 11, 15, and 30 seconds. Coming up on the T minus seven minute, 30 second point in the countdown, the crew access arm now retracting. This is the walkway used by the astronauts to get from the service structure to the orbiter. If an emergency should arise, that arm can be put back into position within 15 seconds. The Johnson Space Center now sending a final update to the onboard computer for antenna management. The AC electrical bus sensors have also been placed in monitor by the pilot Ron Graby. T minus seven minutes and counting. At the six minute point in the countdown, the pilot uh, Ron Graby will perform the auxiliary power unit pre-start. Everything going smoothly as we proceed towards a liftoff at 11.15 and 30 seconds this morning. T minus six minutes, 30 seconds, and counting. The pilot, Ron Graby, has been asked to perform the auxiliary unit pre-start. This consists of positioning a number of switches and verifying that they're in the proper position, then throwing the three propellant isolation valve switches, which allow the hydrazine fuel to start flowing from the tanks towards the APUs. 
T-minus six minutes and counting. Uh, Pilot Graby reporting the APUs are configured for startup. We've had a final go uh, from the weather people for the launch this morning, uh, both for the pad area, the shuttle landing area if there should have to be a return, and the various contingency areas around the world. T-minus five minutes, 30 seconds and counting. The flight recorders are on. The flight recorders provide measurements of the shuttle system performance during the entire mission for playback after landing. 15 seconds away from the T-minus five minute point when we get a go for APUO's start. T-minus five minutes and counting, and we have a go for APU start. The APUs provide auxiliary uh, power, hydraulic power, to move the aerosurfaces and main engines for steering. The liquid oxygen fill and drain valve in the external tank has been closed and topping of that tank completed. And liquid oxygen drain back has been started. This means that uh, liquid oxygen is flowing through the main propulsion system and back to the large storage tank to cool the system down slowly to minus 270 degrees below zero. And we've had a report back that APU's, APU start has been completed. T minus four minutes, 13 seconds and counting. The firing circuit for the solid rocket boosters ignition and range safety destruct systems have been armed. T minus four minutes and counting. The astronaut crew has closed the visors on their launch and entry helmets and the final helium purge of the orbiter's main engines has started to ensure that there's no surplus hydrogen or oxygen in the area at the time of ignition. The ground launch sequencer has determined that the APU hydraulic pressure is now normal for launch and flight. T minus three minutes, 30 seconds and counting. The shuttle now on internal power and the Elevon speed brake and rudder have been moved through a pattern to ensure they're capable of doing their jobs during the mission. The engine gimbal or movement check of the main engines in the orbit are now underway. T minus three minutes and counting. The liquid oxygen valve for filling the external tank is closed and pressurization has begun. After the tank is pressurized, the hold capability is limited to three minutes and 36 seconds. T minus two minutes, 40 seconds, and the caution and warning has been cleared, and the gaseous oxygen vent arm presently being retracted. T minus two minutes, 30 seconds, and counting. T minus two minutes, 15 seconds and counting. The main engines have now been moved to the start position and the astronauts have cleared the caution and warning memories and all systems are verified normal for launch. T minus two minutes. The liquid hydrogen vent valve has been closed and flight pressurization is underway. T minus one minute, 45 seconds and counting. The computers will automatically verify the readiness of the main engines at the one minute point. T minus 90 seconds and counting. T minus one minute, 15 seconds and counting. The liquid hydrogen tank now at flight pressure.
Coming up on the one minute point, T minus one minute and counting, the firing system for the sound suppression water system now armed. And the hydrogen igniters under the orbiter's engines have been armed. These devices ensure that any hydrogen is ignited uh, prior to building up. T minus 45 seconds. Just seconds away from switching command of the countdown to the onboard computers. T minus 35 seconds. T minus 31 seconds, and we're switching control. We have go for auto sequence start. And we have the sequencer on the orbiter now controlling the final seconds to launch. 20 seconds and counting. The body flap and speed bake in launch position. T minus 12, 11, 10, have go for main engine start. T minus six, we have main engine start. Four, three, two, one, ignition, and liftoff, liftoff of Atlantis. A new orbiter joins the shuttle fleet and it has cleared the tower. Roll program initiated, crew confirms roll maneuver.
crew advised negative return. Atlantis no longer capable of returning to launch site in the event of an abort. All systems and mission control give a go. Four minutes, 15 seconds. Velocity, 8,800 feet per second. Altitude, 54 nautical miles. Downrange distance, 143 nautical miles. Three engines still performing normally. Three good APUs and three good fuel cells. Go to press to main engine cutoff. That is a uh, capability of reaching a normal main engine cutoff should there be a single engine failure. Five minutes, velocity 10,600 feet per second, altitude 57 nautical miles, downrange distance 209 nautical miles. Systems on board the Atlantis continue to look good at this time. Five minutes, 35 seconds, velocity 12,300 feet per second, altitude 58 nautical miles. Downrange distance, 269 nautical miles. Standing by for the call for single engine transatlantic uh, capability. Atlantis uh, forward velocity now enables it to reach a transatlantic abort if that would become necessary in the case of two engines out. All engines continuing to perform normally at this time. All systems on board Atlantis look good. Velocity 14,300 feet per second. Altitude 58 nautical miles. Downrange distance 340 nautical miles. Standing by for a single engine Presto Mico call. At that point, the Atlantis uh, capable of reaching normal main engine cutoff on only one engine. Off the reports, navigation is good. Velocity 16,300 feet per second, altitude 57 nautical miles. Crew given the call up for single engine press to main engine cutoff. Capable of reaching main engine cutoff on single engine if that's necessary. Crew read up a change in the earlier call. Uh, after analysis of the data, the first stage performance uh, indicated low. That just affects uh, the uh, later trajectory. And the adjustments made. Uh, engines, three engines now throttling down. Throttling to maintain uh, three Gs. Velocity 21,800 feet per second. Altitude 57 nautical miles. Downrange distance 605. Seconds, velocity 25,000 feet per second, standing by for main engine cutoff command. Main engine cutoff confirmed. Standing by for separation of the external tank. Altitude 60 nautical miles, velocity 26,000 feet per second. Two 
to orbit. Uh, not having achieved orbit at the present time, the external tank doors following separation of the external tank were closed and latched. The auxiliary power units were shut down on time and all of that was normal. Uh, we had a routine uh, ascent this morning. And the spacecraft uh, appears to be in good health at this time. Atlantis crossing the coast of Africa just south of the equator. Uh, having occurred this morning at approximately uh, 30 seconds after 10:15, uh, 10:15 and 30 seconds, and we're now 30 minutes into the flight. This is Mission Control, Houston. This is Mission Control, Houston, at uh, 44 minutes 55 seconds into the flight of the space shuttle Atlantis. The uh, Orbiter is passing out of range of the tracking data relay satellite over the Indian Ocean. The uh, crew initiated the uh, use of the Ohms engine to put the Atlantis in its planned orbit. The uh, space shuttle is in orbit. All systems are in good condition. And the Mission Control Center has given the crew a go for payload bay door opening when they get to that in the timeline. Again, the Ohms engines uh, were fired as planned to put Atlantis in its uh, planned orbit. The space shuttle is in orbit, and the crew has been given a go for payload bay door opening when they come to that point in the timeline. All systems on board, the orbiter Atlantis, are good, and the uh, mission is proceeding as planned. This is Mission Control, Houston. Orbiter's engines have been armed. These devices ensure that any hydrogen is ignited uh, prior to building up. T-minus 45 seconds. Just seconds away from switching command of the countdown to the onboard computers. T-minus 35 seconds. T-minus 31 seconds, and we are switching control. We have go for auto sequence start. And we have the sequencer on the orbiter now controlling the final seconds to launch. 20 seconds and counting. The body flap and speed bake in launch position. T-minus 12, 11, 10, have go for main engine start. T-minus 6, we have main engine start. 4, 3, 2, one ignition and liftoff, liftoff of Atlantis. A new orbiter joins the shuttle fleet and it has cleared the tower.
program initiated. Crew confirms roll maneuver.
Texas and counting. The body flap and speed bake in launch position. T minus 12, 11, 10, have go for main engine start. T minus six, we have main engine start. Four, three, two, one, ignition, and liftoff, liftoff of Atlantis. A new orbiter joins the shuttle fleet and it has cleared the tower. Initiated, crew confirms roll maneuver. Engine start, T minus six, we have main engine start. Four, three, two, one, ignition, and liftoff, liftoff of Atlantis. A new orbiter joins the shuttle fleet and it has cleared the tower. All program initiated, crew confirms roll maneuver. seconds to launch. 20 seconds and counting. The body flap and speed bake in launch position. T minus 12, 11, 10. Have go for main engine start. T minus 6. We have main engine start. 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of Atlantis. A new orbiter joins the shuttle fleet and it has cleared the tower. Initiated, crew confirms roll maneuver. Engines performed. 
performing normally. We have go for main engine start, T minus six. We have main engine start, four, three, two, one, ignition, and liftoff, liftoff of Atlantis. A new orbiter joins the shuttle fleet and it has cleared the tower. Speed bake in launch position. T minus 12, 11, 10. They have go for main engine start. T minus 6. We have main engine start. 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of Atlantis. A new orbiter joins the shuttle fleet and it has cleared the tower. The body flap and speed bake in launch position. T minus 12, 11, 10. They have go for main engine start. T minus 6. We have main engine start. 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of Atlantis. A new orbiter joins the shuttle fleet and it is clear.
per second altitude, 38 nautical miles, downrange distance, 58 nautical miles. Free engines, 104 percent. All systems looking good at this time. At approximately the four-minute point, uh, that we will reach the negative return call. At that point, the Atlantis no longer capable of doing a return to launch site abort. Return status and mission control underway. Velocity 7,400 feet per second, altitude 48 nautical miles, downrange distance 95. 